Hello everyone, good to see you again. This is DC Wood here, and I apologise for the lateness of this review. This is for comedy horror flick The Mother Town on DVD. Last year on the Box of Stuff for Bear Town Radio, my friend Max Van de Kran uh, appeared on the show to discuss a new project he was involved in at the time. The link to that interview can be found in the description of this video. Uh, the Mother Town is the brainchild of independent filmmaker John Williams. Set in John's home of Stoke-on-Trent, The Mother Town's premise is one where all familiar with, an accidental viral outbreak in Stokes' water supply results in most of the population turning into zombies. As the apocalypse grows, various groups of survivors are forced to deal with the crisis in their own way. All their stories will be shared, and obviously people will be eaten alive. Uh, the main cast of characters are as follows. There is uh, Mac, Max van der Kran, and Ron, Daniel Alexander, who are two hapless security guards who fancy themselves as Rambo copycats forward slash ninja experts. There is uh, Mary, Maura Judges, an overly religious protective mother, and her son Stephen, Gary Edwards, who suffers from Tourette syndrome and swears involuntarily. Uh, there is Greg, Stephen Brownsill, a Port Vale football fan, and Andy, Craig Gallimore, a um, Stoke City football fan, rivals who become unlikely friends during the outbreak. There is uh, Keith Smith, who is portrayed by Big Brother winner Pete Bennett, and he's an obnoxious, egotistical and self-centred reporter for Channel 6, um, and he's tagged with his unfortunate cameraman, Rob, David Martin. The cast features dozens more, plus loads of extras, uh, but the film focuses mostly on these eight. Uh, Honourable mentions must also go to the likes of uh, Brandon Littler as Ollie, Sophie Ellsby as Stacy, Mark Rathbone as, and I credit here, uh, the weirdo in the pub, that's who he's uh, credited as, and uh, real-life uh, radio presenter Andrew Lloyd of Six Towns Radio for their prominent roles. Uh, kudos to all of them. Uh, for doing a great job in the parts that they play. Uh, TV presenter Nick Hancock also features in this film, and uh, film director, writer, producer John Williams has numerous roles, uh, with his most prominent character being Sergeant Moss, and Kirk Wilkinson is in tow as Corporal Pope. Before the movie itself kicks off, there is a notice stressing the fact that this is an amateur production. Every single cast member have partaken in this project for absolutely free, and that this movie contains no continuity any continuity is purely coincidental in my eyes there's nothing wrong with any of that at all i've long been a fan of the independent film industry i've always loved the fan films and original flicks that blinky productions have given us over the years uh, bat in the sun productions are absolutely amazing superpower beatdown is my favorite web show and of course one of my favorite things that i covered back in the curtain call days was the um Congleton Film Festival in 2013. Other things that appealed to me about The Mother Town was that my friend Max was starring in it, but also that um, Stoke was the setting for a zombie film. Many familiar locations, such as the Potteries, uh, Judy Sandwich and Oatcake Shop, and the Britannia Stadium are featured in this film. And um, Stoke residents, visitors of Stoke, will enjoy spotting all those familiar places, and all the proceeds from the film's various screenings and the DVD sales go to local charities and causes. Already, the mother town has such merit going for it in terms of conception, premise and purpose, and the execution of it all is quite simply stellar. In the first few moments of the movie, you immediately get the idea of what you're in for. Uh, two incompetent scientists on a lunch break outside, holding a vial containing a virus designed to make the red squirrel more aggressive and kill off the grey population. Whoops! One of them has dropped the chemical into the water supply for all of Stoke-on-Trent. Let's hope that no one gets turned into zombies, eh? Yep, it's a black comedy film, and the laughs kick off right from the get-go. The mother town doesn't take itself seriously, and that's the beauty of it. The presentation is fantastic. John Williams's script has plenty of sharp wit, excellent array of characters, and some good dialogue too, in my opinion. The mother town knows how to invoke genuine hilarities from its audience, but if you think it's all just laughs, you will be surprised. There are real moments of tension and shocking horror sequences that do scare you. Williams clearly understands the human psyche. He knows how to play it like a trombone, and although the zombie film has been done to death, there's some really good material throughout this particular movie to appeal to the casual horror fan. 
The prosthetics, the makeup and visuals are all deliciously gruesome. There's a good soundtrack and most importantly, the film changes gears. Although this is mostly a character driven piece, said characters do develop and you'll enjoy this approach that Williams provides. Getting to know the players watching the ridiculous situations that they find themselves in, the conversations that they have, the enormity of the zombie apocalypse sinking in, all of it coming together for the climax. John Williams knows where he's leading his film, and his achievement is amazing. Despite the mother town's low budget of £500, John clearly grasps the fundamentals of filmmaking and produces something he can truly be proud of. The acting is rather good on the whole. Despite this being an amateur cast, everyone fulfills their roles admirably, and their genuine enthusiasm for this project, plus the film's presentation, offer a true-to-life, down-to-earth feel for the mother town, thus making it all the more enjoyable to sit through. The cast play their colourful parts very well, showcasing mannerisms, expressions, body language and quirks. There are some real nice human touches to behold here, with the best performance performance belonging to Pete Bennett as the despicable TV reporter Keith Smith. The one-time Big Brother winner really lives his part here, and if he's aspiring to be a professional actor, I think he can make a real good go of it. Um, John Williams also scores more points for his suave portrayal of Sergeant Moss, and credit must also go to Nick Hancock. He doesn't have a major role in the film, but he's part of a brilliant running gag that will make you laugh whenever it pops up. The, the presence of the former presenter of They Think It's All Over and Room 101 one certainly most welcome here it's a really good appearance from him um again taking into account the film's minimal budget there's some really well pulled off special effects also there are guns and explosions decapitation and more along plus there's a, a really nice parkour display from brandon littler which was another good surprise um the cinematography is great i love it there are several really good shots of stoke on trent's countryside and an insight into stoke life john williams takes time to showcase his love of his hometown and the wonderful community spirit and equality to be found there. There's so much stuff to commend the mother town for, there really is. However, I do have some criticisms um, regarding the mother town. The first is the length. This film is over two hours long, and while it does make good use of its time overall, the pacing is iffy in places. I personally think that 90 minutes would have been more of a comfortable running time for this sort of movie, but that's just my opinion. Um, the sound editing is good for the majority, but there are moments whenever a song is playing over certain scenes and the lyrics, the, the music um, volume, does eclipse um, the actor's lines, eclipsing the audio of um, of what's going on on camera. Um, the worst case of this was the, um, the pub scene with Greg, Andy and the, the weirdo in the pub where the dialogue between the characters was nigh on inaudible and I had to turn the volume up a lot to try and hear what the cast was saying. This was an unfortunate technical issue and sadly leaves a blemish on the production. Um, another thing that surprised me was the 12 rating this film got. Granted, it's by no means the most extreme horror film that you will ever see, but there's enough graphic horror violence and strong language to make this a 15 at least surely um moving on to the actual dvd um itself the end result is worthy of publication the case is good the layout design of the cover sleeve is nice um the printing onto the disc is beautifully done uh, the dvd plays fine when you put it into the player and stops when the feature finishes um there's no scene selection option or even a, a main menu present. Um, this plays like a, a video CD, essentially. Um, the picture and sound quality are overall good, and the format is just fine. Um, I only wish that there were chapter breaks in this DVD for convenience sake. But despite the flaws, this is brilliant. The Mother Town is a most ambitious, do-it-yourself film that achieves what it's set out to do. John Williams and all his cast and crew have every right to be proud of what they've achieved and all the money they've raised for noble causes. Granted, it's not mainstream material, but who cares? This has the potential to be a cult classic, and if you love stuff like South Park and Shaun of the Dead, this is right up your street. Again, there are mistakes, but they can easily be forgiven, and it's all stuff that John Williams will no doubt learn from for next time. One to watch, four stars.
The Mother Town is available to purchase on DVD at £10, plus an additional £2 for packaging and posting. To obtain a copy, visit the Mother Town's Facebook page on the link below, and uh, leave a personal message to the page's administrators. All proceeds from the film's sales go to local charities. Thanks for listening, everyone. My next review will be about Ivan Cooper's book, uh, Tibet, An Accidental Pilgrimage. This is DC Wood signing out. See you next time.